The mini star and bio star use positive pressure which gives you superior adaptation to your model, ensuring the accuracy and fit of your appliance. These machines can significantly reduce your lab expense by increasing the variety of appliances you can do in-house. Most of the Technic videos in our Resource Center feature the BioStar because that's what we use in our commercial lab at Great Lakes. For most dental practices, the MiniStar is ideal. You can use the MiniStar to fabricate the same extensive variety of appliances that you can with the BioStar. Apply liquid separator to the model except along the facial surfaces where the wires will be waxed in place. Position the wires on the model. Heat a number 7 wax spatula and melt pink base plate wax onto the spatula. Apply wax facially over the wires to hold them to the model. The retainer wire should be one half to one millimeter away from the palatal tissue. This is necessary to allow retainer acrylic to flow around wires. Adjust pellets within the cup to elevate the model. For a holly retainer, the top tooth surfaces should be at the height of the cup's rim. Fill the gap between the model and the cup's rim with pellets. Sweep excess pellets with a 1 inch brush. Pellet level should be against the occlusal two surfaces and heel of model and extend to the rim of the cup. Make sure the pellets are removed from the cup's rim. Select a 2 mm biocryl disc. A variety of colors and pattern designs are available. Clamp the biocryl disc onto the chamber. Identify the material's heating time or BioStar code and enter it into the machine. Heating times will vary based on color and thickness. Swing the lamp over the clamp material to start the heating cycle. With 45 seconds remaining in the heating cycle, mix monomer liquid and polymer powder to a maple syrup consistency with a number 7 spatula. With approximately 20 to 30 seconds remaining in the heating cycle, apply the mixed resin to flow along wires. Heating cycle and resin application should conclude at the same time. At the end of the heating cycle, swing the lamp to the back of the machine. Swing the chamber over the model in the pellet cup and lock the chamber in place and cool under pressure for two and a half to three minutes. During this phase, the applied resin will cure. At the end of the cooling and curing cycle, evacuate the pressure from the chamber. Unlock the chamber and clamped material. Swing open the chamber and remove formed material and model from the pellet cup. Some pellets may stick to the formed material. Remove pellets with lab knife. Then loosen the wires that were held in place with wax along the facial surface of the model and remove formed plastic. The retainer shape must be cut out before the final trim can be accomplished. The cutout line should be approximately 3 to 4 millimeters above the final trim reference. The plastic is cut at the distal of the molars and along the lingual cusp tips at the posterior segment. The anterior section is cut near the incisal edges. Using a carbide cutting burr and lab handpiece, cut out the retainer from the disc. 
Start by cutting along the back of the appliance at the first or second molar reference. Then cut along the lingual cusps of the posterior teeth and near the incisal edges of the anteriors. Caution must be used around wires that are embedded in plastic. Either pull the burr out of the plastic at the wires and continue on the other side or cut out around wires. Once the cut has been made in the plastic, remove the retainer from the disc. The posterior segment is scalloped one and one half millimeters above the gingival margins to rest against the cervical crown surface and rounded to the interdental papilla height along the anterior dentition. This is accomplished by using a carbide cone or taper burr and a lab handpiece. Make sure the burr does not grind into the wire framework. The handpiece burr is held parallel to the occlusal surface of the retainer to obtain the proper scallop trim in the posterior segment. Once this position is obtained, flip the appliance to view the gingival contours. Reduce acrylic to one and one half millimeters from gingival margins. The back or heel of the retainer is often tapered forward near the mid palatal area. Maintain plastic contact against the last tooth on each side of the arch and taper acrylic forward about one quarter of an inch. Finally, the scale of posterior and rounded anterior segments are blended into the retainer body. Acrylic that extends along the wire to the occlusal area is removed with a brush and a handpiece. This brush-like burr will not harm wire work but will trim away acrylic. A sandpaper mandrel with a 3 inch strip of 150 grit sandpaper is used with a lab handpiece to smooth trim surfaces. Insert the sandpaper into the slot of the burr. Then wrap the sandpaper around the burr as shown. Use medium handpiece speed to smooth trimmed surfaces. For the finishing process, a dental lathe with splash pans are used. The pumicing process is often accomplished using the left side of the lathe. The polishing agents are applied using the right side. A lathe with quick chuck attachment is suggested. Also, a splash pen with vacuum system for the polishing application is used. A medium grade pumice with a rag wheel is used for the first finishing application. Moisten the pumice with tap water as well as the rag wheel. Turn the lathe on low speed and attach the wheel. Apply pumice to the retainer plastic and press against the wheel to smooth trimmed acrylic surfaces. Apply additional pumice and continue application. Then rinse and dry appliance. The polishing application is accomplished in three steps. 
First, a Tripoli polish is applied using a muslin wheel, which is designated for only that polish. Second, a Fabuluster polish is used with another muslin wheel. Finally, a metal polish is applied with a third muslin wheel to shine wires. Attach the threaded mandrel in the lathe quick chuck. Low speed is used. Then place the muslin wheel onto the mandrel and apply Tripoli polish. Apply polish to the pumiced acrylic surfaces. Once this application is complete, remove the Tripoli wheel. Place a second muslin wheel and apply Fabuluster. Polish acrylic surfaces. Remove the Fabuluster wheel and replace it with a third muslin wheel to polish wires. Apply metal polish to the wheel and polish wires. Scrub the retainer with warm tap water and liquid dish soap. Adjust wires and acrylic as needed. These technique videos, along with the other information on the Resource Center, can show you how to get the most from your machine and how to ultimately take control of your lab bill. Maximize the potential of your Mini Star.